position promise and then see the percentage that they have fulfilled. Because of kataks, isn't it? Yes. If there were no fraud, none of this would have happened. Yes. We should come up with what they have done, you know? So how do you give Germany that particular job time? It is only through your report card. Their vote will determine their future for the next five years. Our guests for tonight. Previously on Sirius, for Kota Sentosa. Go through what this opposition promised and then see the percentage that they have fulfilled. Because of kataks, isn't it? Yes. If there were no fraud, none of this would have happened. Yes. We should come up with what they have done, you know? So how do you give Germany that particular job time? It is only through your report card. Their vote will determine their future for the next five years. Our guests for tonight. In three, two, one, go. Hello, 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 and welcome to Series for Kota Sentosa. I am Sivanesan Shanmugalingam. I was with you on the first show. And I'm back. Anyway, today we are here to discuss. It's going to, not going to be a very long show. We're going to discuss a little bit about youth development, higher education, and, and, and things that are connected to that. Now, before we uh, proceed with the show, we have a surprise message. A surprise message from our friends uh, in the higher education ministry. I won't, tell, I won't say his name yet. I will let you see the video. Hi, salam Take a brother look. Winfred. I'm so sorry I couldn't make it. Hi, salam brother Winfred. I'm so sorry I couldn't make it tonight. Nevertheless, I'm with you in spirit and vision. The Ministry of Higher Education is always at the back and call of any visionary leader who put the youth of our future in their hearts and in mind. Please do not hesitate to contact me and the Ministry should you need any assistance. Let's do it together for Kota Sentosa, for Sarawak, for Malaysia and Pasinya. Right, right, that was none other than the Deputy Higher Education Minister. And he, he was supposed to be with us on the show today. But uh, as you all understand, it is the Sarawak election going on right now. And uh, he is only here to perform his uh, official duties. So we could only get this uh, small clip from him. But uh, what you know now, what you understand now, is that our friend and candidate, Mr. Wilfred Yap Yao Sin, as the, our guest there mentioned, right, is always welcome to the Higher Education Ministry. Should he need any assistance and help from the Higher Education Ministry to help you guys in Kota Sentosa. So that is the most important point for that whole clip, right guys? So again, we will go back to our show, what we, were going, we are going to discuss. That is higher education will be the first thing we discuss. Second, we'll be discussing a little bit about job fairs, job opportunities, and job placements. And of course, entrepreneur development. There are three things that Wilfred has mentioned many a times he wants to do for Kota Sentosa. Should you give him that trust and mandate to be the uh, YB or the elected representative for N12 Kota Sentosa? So, I'll start with, uh, first I'll start with our guest here. On my, on my right hand side here is uh, Mr. Dato Sim Kanchio. Right, Dato Sim, Dato Sim here is a man who has been in social service for very, very long time in very, very different big spheres, right? One of the things that he had done, um, if you guys don't remember, I would like to remind you, is the Kuching Intercultural Mooncake Festival, the iconic event mm. that we had, you know, for seven days, eight days, until the last one was about 11 days. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, during the planning and uh, execution of those events, I remember very well, Dato Sim always mentioned to me, Siva, we want to be able to give a platform to these young people to try out their, their businesses and all that. They can use this trip to show their program, uh, to show their products. To, so he wanted all the time to be able to let the youth right, participate in entrepreneurship, even, even how small it may be. So we, let's, let's talk to Dato a little bit about his ideas about entrepreneurship development among the youth. Okay. Thank you, Siva. Uh, thank you again. Hello, good. Hello everybody. 
uh, allows viewers to see us uh, from Kota Sentosa. So, uh, thank you for the uh, introduction tonight, Siva. Uh, this is a top topic that uh, affects me a lot because I have four children. And uh, my four children, uh, as a parent, you do worry that what they're going to do next, how you're going to provide for them. And then after, after providing for them, how do you educate them? How far can they go? And, you, and I would, uh, if you remember, I think one of the one of the candidate, Mr. Wilfred Yap, uh, said about uh, his manifesto is to eradicate poverty through education, and that is very true. And I can share with you that it's so important that uh, if you get educated, you yourself, your children will be able to look after themselves. They will be able to move on in life and move up in life, and that's very important. And uh, we have, uh, I have three children that is all uh, up to a, a first degree. Mm -hmm. And my daughter is a master's degree. And your daughter degree. is a master's degree, yeah. And my younger son is uh, basically a, a special child, so he, he can't go further than a form five. Uh, he's a difficulty in learning or autism, due to autism. And this is what uh, I have to face, or these are challenges that I go through as a parent. And, uh, and to share with you so what Wilfred Yap want to do, I will support because it is so important that you can you cannot give them the fish, you give them the fishing rod. Because you just give them the fish, you can finish tomorrow. But when you give the fishing rod, they can continue to fish all the time. And that's important. That's part of education. That is what Wilfred Yap want to do for people in Kota Sentosa, which I support. Right. Um, I also know that uh, Dato, Dato uh, has done some, uh, some homework on this matter, right? Because like he mentioned about his special child, right? His name is Alistair. He is now an upcoming talented artist, right? So maybe we can get a little bit of insight from Dato. How did he come about recognizing this talent and then how did he build it up until Alistair, if I'm not mistaken, Alistair now even sells some of his artwork, yes, doesn't he, yes. Dato? Yeah, thank you. Uh, see, see, just a good, interesting question. Uh, well, I thought life is a breeze, it's easy. You, you get your children through from five, then go to A-level, then you go get your degree, apply universities, you get a loan, uh, all that, you can do that. That is within the system, the, the mass catering system for everybody across the world. But this special child that I have, where do I go after Form 5? There's nothing in Sarawak, there's nothing uh, that in Kuching that can provide further education for him. And the thing is, he had difficulties in learning. So the challenge that I went through and my wife went through uh, is that to identify what he can do so that when we are not around anymore, he will be able to survive on his own. And that is the biggest challenge. But uh, Fortunately, I spent an afternoon with him and he was in my office and he drew something that is blew my mind. He actually, actually can draw the world map freehand, uh, almost copy freehand, almost to exact detail. And I was so shocked that he can do that. And I took him to a, a guru, a, a teacher that can do artists. And then from there, he progressed from water, pen, water uh, pencil, watercolor to oil painting. Oil painting. And uh, we are, we, I brought him, of course, it was the interculture mooncake. I almost promote uh, the youngsters to say, come and trade, yes. come and show off your talent. Yes. So I thought maybe my son can do an uh, exhibition, mm. which, he, which he did. And he took all this oil painting and was at the Medica, uh, Medica Plaza. Medica Plaza. Mm. And uh, we show off to uh, show to the public and was quite well received. And that gave us a confidence to carry on for him to continue painting. And until today, he's still painting. And he's on Alistair's artworks uh, in the Facebook. You can go in and visit and have a look at all the painting. And uh, I know our Minister of Welfare, uh, Dato Sri Fatima, uh, loves his painting. And, uh, and we try to... Uh, First of all, give hope to the parents. Tell parents with this special child, do not give up. 
you, you can identify the talent, they can even be better than normal child. Yeah. And this is a thing that we've been trying to promote him on. And further, uh, next, in February, he'll be in TVS. Uh, he was given uh, one hour, one, hour one, one episode of this special child program. Oh. And uh, there you hopefully go. you guys uh, can go and come on and join and watch TVS. And it's not their sentence. It's when you have this special child, it might even be a better than your ordinary child. Okay. There you go. There you go. From starting with an idea of getting the masses into entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneur spirit, entrepreneurial development, he actually found a way to help one of his child that is a special child. Now, let's talk to Wilfred, right? Let's talk to Wilfred. Now, sir, you have mentioned from the beginning of this campaign that youth development is a priority as far as you're concerned. You mentioned job fairs, you mentioned incubators, you mentioned a, a variety of things. Maybe talk about one of the, th the things that you want to um, put in place um, in, the near, in the near future rather than a long-term plan, a short-term plan. What is something that you can do if you were elected as a representative for the people of Kota Sentosa? Um, thank you, Siva, and uh, thank you, viewers. Obviously, you know the Chinese have got a saying, Siva, woman can chung. Now, if you translate it, it says that uh, we can be poor, but we should never be poor on education. Okay, so when you talk about youth development, I think it is a foregone conclusion that education okay, is the best mode to actually uplift people from poverty. Now, if you look in Kota Sentosa now, okay, I've already said it many times, there are the B40 segment, there yes. are the M40 segments, and there are the T20 segments. Yes. But my concentration is the rich can take care of themselves. The middle class can take care of their children. But the poor, the bottom 40, they are the ones who are going to be facing problems. Because a lot of them will be kais pagi, makan petang. So when it comes to investment in education for the B40s, some, it might be a burden. Mm. Okay, so when you're talking about Wi-Fi, mm. they might not be able to afford a Wi-Fi. Mm. When you talk about computers, they might not be able to afford one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first thing that I will do, if I do get elected, okay, first thing is, I've already said it many, many times, I will set up a Pusat Hitman. Yes. Now, the difference between my Pusat Hitmat and a Pusat Hitmat from, from, from let's say other... Let's say Let's say... Uh, let's, let's not mention names. Okay, I will right. just say that uh, other, other opposition Pusat Hitmats, mm. when the election comes, it's very, very busy. After the election, not so busy. Mm. Okay? In fact, might not also be functioning. Mm. But what I want to do is I want to set up a fully functioning Pusat Hitmat. Uh, a functioning service centre that will be there to serve the public. And within this Pusat Hitma, I will set up an incubator-like facility. Mm -hmm. That means anybody, okay, especially the, 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 the poorer B40 families, they can always send their children there if they require certain uh, computer facilities, printer facilities, you know, that kind of thing. Probably wi I'll just... Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be a big setup, Siva. Mm. It's just going to be a room, probably 10 by 10 feet. Put a few computers in there, put a Wi-Fi in there, put a printer in there. And this is accessible to the constituents. Mm. And the targeted group will be the B40. Mm. That one, we can achieve. Based... In the short term, yeah. Yeah, in the short term. Yes. Right. So, we're looking at... That, that, that was the answer. He gave us a very clear answer to everybody who's asking, asking again and again and again, the answer is very clear. First thing he will do is set up his uh, service centre and that service centre will be equipped with facilities for the even entrepreneurs, I think. Uh, if it's an incubator, then uh, it will be a plus point for uh, young entrepreneurs. 
and uh, if it is also available for them to use the Wi-Fi. Can we go into the Siva? Yes. If I may butt in. Yes. Okay, when you talk about entrepreneurial development, mm. now the first thing that an entrepreneur would need to do is he needs to set up a company. Sure. Mm. Now, a lot of times, the younger populace, when they want to set up a company or a partnership or a sole prop, they do not have, even have a business address. Mm. Okay? So, so they can use the incubator as a business address. Mm. Okay? That's the first step. Mm. They will set up their company. So I will also, this particular incubator that I'm talking about will cater for the, 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 this kind of young entrepreneurs, the youth mm -hmm. especially. You know, like for example, uh, our video crew today. Right. Okay? They are young people. You know, they have bright dreams, they have fantastic ideas, right? right? So there are a lot more people, people like that out there, who does not know how to actually advance, how to actually set up a business. These are things that they can come to me for, mm -hmm. you know, with my, with my little bit of legal background. I can mm -hmm. always assist them, advise them on how to set up uh, sole props, partnership, limited liability, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. You know, I'm always ready to assist the younger people. Mm. Yeah. Now, the ever so humble Mr. Wilfred Yap and his statement, I, I have to catch on that statement, latch on to that statement, because he just said that my little bit of uh, legal experience, the man has been in the legal profession over 20 years. He's been to the Court of Appeal, I believe. Right? Well, I've done cases in the Federal Court, Court federal of Appeal, court High you Court, see, you know, yeah, the whole that range. He calls, that he calls little, yeah? Very, very modest man. Um, kind of one of the things that attracted me to, you know, uh, come forward this election to be with him and the team. Uh, because he's a straight talking person and as you saw just now, he went straight to the point and he gave you what you need to know. Now, let's move on, right? Let's... Uh, sorry. Yeah, Sansara. Right, I'm very sorry about that, yeah, because I got, I got caught up with one of his notes. <laughs> i tell you what, i tell you what, Siva. We'll, 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 we'll just uh, lighten things up a bit and get to the end of the story. No. Okay, I, 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 I want to talk to you a little bit. I want oh, to talk to, to you. Yeah, right. I want and to talk to the youth I'm out there. I'm also young, you know, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> what happens is, you know, there is this I'm thing called eSports. International okay? School. Okay, now if you look at, at eSports, which is a Sukma... International School. Yeah a game which is in the Sukma games now, you find that our youth who are very interested in eSports do not have a platform. So what I intend to do in N12 Kota Sentosa is I want to provide them platform. And how do I provide the platform? I will uh, organize small competitions for them, for the youth in N12 Kota Sentosa. And through this particular platform, through these little, little competitions, they will sharpen up their skills. And after they sharpen up their skills, then they can move on to a bigger stage. So that's something that I'm very, very interested in. And I really want to provide this particular platform to the youth. And uh, I hope that the youth in Kota Sentosa will be receptive to new ideas. I think youth are receptive to new mm. ideas. And uh, I'm an old man. So I should be receptive to ideas from the youth and I can promise the youth one thing that I'm going to be very receptive to the ideas and if you uh, Siva can I talk about this yeah you know my memes in my in my in my in my Facebook are about it. yes yeah. you see the memes actually is a youth thing memes are a youth thing and when I was first introduced to this you see I was very receptive to these kind of ideas why because I'm going to be very open to ideas from the youth. And uh, I think if I'm given the opportunity, I will be even more receptive to ideas from the youth. And I will try my very best to actually enhance their talents. And uh, we will also try to do all these kind of uh, talent hunts. Because in, as far as youth development nowadays is concerned, we should not restrict ourselves. Yeah. We should be very open. Yeah. We should prepare our youth for the global stage, for the international stage, for the national stage. That I, kind of I thing. totally agree. I totally agree, with Fred. You know, guys, I was uh, actually made aware about something quite recently that 
there's a young man from Betong. He's from the jungle of Betong there, right? And he went into FIFA Sports competition online. And he went he became so good that he couldn't he couldn't find at that time he couldn't find a team in Malaysia. And not talking about Sarawak, all Malaysia he couldn't find a team. So he joined a few friends that he met online in Singapore and they went under the Singapore banner and they won the FIFA World Cup series in Hong Kong. Guys, it's not simply winner, they also won five hundred thousand US dollars, guys. Right? So don't look down at esports. Esports is definitely the future. And look at this man. We haven't even started yet. He, he is already thinking about the future. So getting these boys, I'm sure when your competitions are on, you know, they sharpen their skills. Then it's oh, they are they are ready for the global stage. They will be ready for the global stage. You see? So yes, thank you very much. We first no, I I have some other question for that talk here. Um, basically, we're talking about Sarawak here, and uh, recently, or not so recently, maybe two years ago, our Chief Minister uh, found a way, by reading through the, the Constitution, he found that Sarawak, Sarawak, <coughs> excuse me, it's more like a tickle there, Sarawak has rights to 5% or actually any amount of percentage of sales tax on oil and gas products. And he imposed the 5% tax, he got a little bit of extra money. From there, he has initiated four international schools in Sarawak. Now, back to the back to that talk here. So because I'm bringing the line in for the discussion about international schools. And so, uh, that talk, can you give us a little bit of your opinion about all this uh, effort that Sarawak is putting spending money for the international schools uh, to be available for the B40. Yeah, uh, this uh, initiative uh, was started by uh, South government. Four international schools will be built and the one that is already started is in Kuching. Uh, I think it's 12 miles, uh, Jalan Siren, Kuching Siren Road. And uh, it's meant for B40 and M42. Uh, international school that is uh, to Cambridge syllabus, Cambridge as in England syllabus. So this is a very good uh, initiative for our Sarokians, so that uh, we are being educated into the international standard, so that we can our children in Sarawak are able to be educated to the world standard. And apart from that, uh, Siva, I'd like to share with you this. Is, uh, this international school will be run by Yasan Sarawak. Mm -hmm. And this Yasan Sarawak also provide grant and loan to all Sarawakians. Colorblind. Okay? Colorblind. It means anybody can apply if you have the qualification to go to university, local universities, even international universities, overseas universities. But the overseas in, uh, universities, the loan will be lower uh, of, of lower percentage of the school fees. This is uh, the thing that I need to share with Sarawakians. Uh, your future is very bright in Sarawak. If you can study, the Sarawak government will support you through Yarasan Sarawak, through international schools. These are all laid out for us, for the future of Sarawakians. And this needs to be shared. A lot of people do not want to emphasize this, but our, our government has been doing this for Sarawakian so that their future are not impeded, their future are, will be uh, for right. everybody. Mm. And uh, with this uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic, with the lockdown and all that, certainly a lot of people are unemployed coming up from the school. Some uh, uh, start, uh, starting to go to job market. Uh, the government also started a lot of this reskilling, retraining, upgrading. All these programs we started, and uh, the, the vocational school, the TVEX are all there for for all the Sarawakians. Yeah, you know, this is this is what's happening at this moment. Thank you, Rato. Thank you very much for for the explanation. And now, the international schools are basically at the moment uh, placed, uh, positionally placed at. Uh, at the 
at the moment the, the one that is nearest to us will be in uh, Pendison. It will be in Pendison yeah, area. Uh, somewhere in the 13 mile area. Right? That, that's the nearest to Puching City. Now, it is not impossible. Right? I, 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 let me ask this question to Wilfred, right? Will it be possible to, for you, as a YB, is it within your purview to go to the government and request that such an international school be uh, one to be held in uh, Kota Sentosa? One of them. Well, uh, Siva, there is... Uh, you know, I'm the kind of person that will never say never. Nothing is impossible. It's just a question of whether you're hardworking enough to knock on doors. Mm -hmm. And I think the High Education Minister uh, says that, you know, if I want to knock on the door, then basically I can knock on his door. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sure for the other ministers, like for example our CM, mm -hmm. I'm sure that he's a very open person. Mm -hmm. And if we're hardworking enough, our ideas are good enough, and it benefits our community, benefits our society, and benefits the voters of Kota Sintosa, I'm sure he would be receptive. It's just a question of whether the ideas that we get from the youth, their suggestions, whether it is good enough for the government to actually invest in. You know? Yeah, and I'm sure you will, you, will, you will, you know, in consultation with everybody, you will only bring the best ideas that you can mm. bring. Can bring. Um, and the other, thing you can, the, the other thing we can talk about is before we go forward into other matters, I would like to, for you, because we have to accept the fact that a good majority of our people do speak in Mandarin. Yes. Right? Now, I can't speak any Mandarin, right? If I start speaking Mandarin, you people will start asking for my autograph and all that kind of thing. So, <laughs> no, I'm not going to speak in any Mandarin. Though I will not understand very much of it, I would love it if you could just give a message, maybe sum up a little bit of what you have just said today, especially about youth entrepreneur development. Right? Uh, and the, the things that you want to do in your manifesto in Mandarin for our viewers. Um, thank you, Siva. So, first, I want to to you a Because this is a discussion. English discussion. And my Hawaii is not very high. But what I want to do today is we will have a moderator, and that moderator. Uh, I think it's on the Monday. This week, we will have a moderator. Then he will moderate our Chinese uh, So I hope to be able to speak Mandarin on the Monday and, uh, and to communicate with our viewers uh, this coming Monday, I understand. Okay, so I look forward... So, so I look forward to speaking Mandarin on, on this coming Monday. All right. Okay. Right. That so we got some messages so from friends as asking us how come he's not speaking Mandarin. Of course he can speak Mandarin. Of course that lot here also can speak Mandarin. The problem is I can speak Mandarin. So they are being very nice to me, allowing me to continue the show in English. Yeah. yeah. So we want to go to. Um, I tell you what, Sokso. A lot of people do not know about this organization. They're the social security organization which is helping with workers, okay? And uh, Datuk Sim here has a lot of knowledge or uh, experience dealing with Sokso and uh, he wants to share a little bit with us what Sokso can do with regards to the youth. Datuk. Uh, okay, thank you, Siva. Mm -hmm. On Sokso, I, I just share basically through the pandemic, uh, the government has given a lot of uh, Salaries, uh, salary, uh, what do you call it? salary subsidy, to all these companies that cannot operate during the lockdown, and uh, a lot of uh, companies uh, basically have been saved by this particular program, where they will give you six hundred ringgit per employee per month for six months and all that over the various uh, lockdown, and so also, also basically. Because due to the pandemic, a lot of companies closed down, especially those tourist-related uh, businesses. So they will try to do training, retraining and placement. And if you go to Sokso website, they will tell you uh, what, uh, what are the jobs available. And the government also gives up the program that uh, if you employ new staff, they will able to subsidize their salary too. 
Mm. And this is what uh, I think is is important to share at mm. this time uh, that we we have that sort of uh, program by the Malaysian government. Right. Okay, and uh, we also Canada. want to talk about uh, uh, Siva. We also talk about uh, uh, university placement. We we'll talk about job placement. So we know that our SUPP every year that has university placement. Mm. They also help people, help students to apply for grant. Uh, and, and how to apply. They give all these talks. They actually have a show going through Sarawak. Uh, and, uh, I, I, and then, of course, the job placement now, usually you just go to Sokso. But I'm, I agree with uh, Wilfred Punya uh, manifesto, what he wants to do. He wants to do a matching. Uh, his incubator also helps to find jobs placements uh, uh, if mm-hmm. you put him in the dune. Yeah? Mm. Yeah. Now, before we end the show today, as I promised, it's going to be a short show uh, for the benefit of everybody. Um, today is a Saturday night. I'm sure many movies on TV, many things <laughs> on Netflix, many things on Apple Plus, on all these different platforms that you have. We're not going to take too much of your time anymore. So, be, but before I end, I would like to really emphasize here that while Dato was mentioning that uh, SUPP does have the job placement exercise and the, the job fair exercise. What I'm trying, I, I would like to emphasize here is that Wilfred will be committed to do the same thing, but not for the whole world. He will concentrate on Kota Sentosa, right? That is what you guys need to know. He will concentrate on Kota Sentosa. He will not be interested in the rest of the world, right? He'll be interested only in you guys. Right, before we leave, I want to replay that message that we had from the Minister of Higher Education to show to you guys how serious we are for Kota Sentosa, how serious Wilford is for Kota Sentosa because he's already got the endorsement of the Higher Education Minister saying, Hey guy, hey man, knock my door, I will answer it. So guys, one more time from the Deputy Minister of Higher Education. Right guys, that was the show today. As I promised, short, sharp, sweet and simple. We are serious for Kota Sentosa. Are you serious for Kota Sentosa?